But the animal rights people, they keep saying, I can't have these tigers. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 true crime series of the century so far. I mean, I thought about putting it in a sleeping bag or something and then dragging the whole thing out, but good God, that's ridiculous. For this list, we're looking at the best true crime dramas, mystery television series, and documentaries that have been released since the year 2000. Which of these did you find the most intriguing? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, The Act. Unlike many true crime shows, the act is quite complicated, with difficult characters and no obvious line between good and evil. The show adapts the story of Dee Dee Blanchard and her allegedly abused daughter Gypsy Rose. I like you special. Blanchard was found dead on June 14, 2015, and both Gypsy Rose and her boyfriend Nicholas Godijan were convicted for her killing. Yes, I dreamed that it would be perfect. And actually, that's... The act is led by mesmerizing performances from Patricia Arquette and Joey King, both of whom received Emmy nominations with Arquette winning. They give rich and nuanced turns as Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose respectively, imbuing their characters with surprising complexity. The act deftly mixes horror with psychological drama, providing viewers with a surprisingly layered true crime series. Right now, the world sees you as a cold-blooded killer. But I, I couldn't have killed me, Mom. I love her. Number 19, Unsolved Mysteries. In the pantheon of true crime, Unsolved Mysteries stands tall as one of the greats. The show has been on and off television since the mid-80s and became enormously popular thanks to its tantalizing stories and the iconic narration of the late Robert Stack. Netflix revived the series in 2020, and while Stack was painfully absent, the show still brought the excitement and intrigue. He came vertical through that thing like a projectile. The stories are engrossing, and they set the social media sphere alight with theories. Unsolved Mysteries is a unique program, as it shares a distinctive give-and-take relationship with its viewers. There is no family to, uh, to notify because this person doesn't exist. She had checked in under a false name. It asks us to participate in the mystery, and that gives it a certain quality that many other true crime shows sorely lack. She's not going anywhere near water that she could possibly slip and fall into. That's not her. Number 18, Wild Wild Country. The best documentaries are often the ones that illuminate a fascinating but forgotten or little known story. Wild Wild Country certainly belongs in that category, the Netflix doc tells the story of Indian mystic Rajneesh and the community of his Rajneesh movement known as Rajneesh Puram. Looking at the people in silence. They lived in rural Oregon and allegedly carried out various atrocities. This includes giving 751 people food poisoning in 1984, which is widely considered the first instance of bioterrorism in 20th century America. We had no idea that we were going to run into the largest poisoning case in the history of the United States. The story is gripping and expertly told, offering up rich plot developments galore. It is an introspective and sympathetic glimpse into fanaticism and how these types of communities develop. Put simply, it's gripping from all angles. It's just, it's just too strange to get your mind around, really. Number 17, Dahmer, Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story. It seems like true crime is all the rage nowadays, and that trend continued with this show. A dramatization of the life of serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer, Monster was half character study, half monument to his many victims. Why does everybody always want to leave me? The story of Dahmer is obviously one of the most popular in all of true crime, and Evan Peters received widespread acclaim for his performance. I told you he fell over. Okay, he gets real drunk like this. The show was also an enormous commercial success, becoming one of the most watched English programs in Netflix's history. Serial killer dramas are a dime a dozen, but few have the craft of Dahmer monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Death is uh, just a part of life. Number 16, The Dropout. True crime isn't just killings and disappearances. It can also be instances of blatant fraud, as is evidenced in the wonderfully acted Hulu drama, The Dropout. So you are America's youngest female self-made billionaire. That's pretty cool. 
Amanda Seyfried won an Emmy for playing Elizabeth Holmes, the founder and CEO of the disgraced company Theranos. Theranos claimed that it had revolutionized the technology behind blood testing, but this was all a ruse. The rules are outdated. How can we actually get anything done? How can we make any changes if we're being hunted? In actuality, Holmes was defrauding her investors, and she was eventually sentenced to just over 11 years in prison. The Dropout, based on the podcast of the same name, is an engrossing character study that examines the life of Holmes and explores the circumstances that led her down a criminal path. We thought that we were doing the right thing. Number 15, Evil Genius, the true story of America's most diabolical bank heist. This title promises a lot. It prepares us for a genius antagonist, and it claims to tell of the most diabolical bank heist in American history. Luckily, the show manages to meet the title's sky-high claims. The four-part documentary explores the 2003 death of Brian Wells, a pizza delivery man who robbed a bank while wearing an explosive collar. Could an individual who knew they had a live device around their neck be so calm? The core story is absolutely wild, and it takes viewers on a crazy ride involving bank robberies, explosions, inheritance money, and scavenger hunts. Someone may have rec or may recognize the instrument, the metal, the locking material that's used to secure it to the neck. The magic of Evil Genius lies in the story that it tells, as it twists and turns like a captivating crime drama. It is another binge-worthy notch in Netflix's long belt of true crime documentaries. And the third thing you need to know about Marjorie Deal Armstrong. Most of the men in her life don't seem to last very long. Number 14, Dope Sick. America is currently in the midst of an opioid epidemic, and that epidemic is dramatized in the Peabody-winning Dope Sick. An expansive story beautifully told, Dope Sick follows many facets of the epidemic, including the controversial pharmaceutical company Purdue Pharma and its owners, the Sackler family. Oh, no, sir. No, 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 no. Uh, we are not investigating Purdue Farms. We are investigating Purdue Pharma. The acting throughout the show is uniformly excellent, resulting in six of the show's 14 Emmy nominations. Michael Keaton was the cast's only winner, playing the composite character Dr. Samuel Phoenix. I would never prescribe a narcotic for moderate pain. The show contains difficult subject matter, as the opioid epidemic has victimized millions of people. But it's a necessary story to tell, however painful it may be. He lost his mother to your horrible drug when he was only six years old. Number 13, I'll Be Gone in the Dark. This HBO documentary is quite interesting. It's not about a specific crime necessarily, but about the very business of true crime. It follows the late author Michelle McNamara as she writes her book, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, which is about the Golden State Killer, Joseph D'Angelo. Part of the thrill of the game for him, I believe, was a kind of connect the dots puzzle he played with people. Like the documentary, McNamara's book concerned both the case itself and the author's process of researching and investigating it. Until we put a face on a killer who remains a question mark, he will continue to hold sway over us. This is evidenced in its subtitle, One Woman's Obsessive Search for the Golden State Killer. McNamara makes for an absorbing central figure, and her personal story is lovingly told by her widower and the documentary's producer, Patton Oswalt. It hit on a Tuesday, and it debuted at number one on the New York Times list. Number 12, Tiger King. The world went into lockdown in March of 2020 owing to the COVID pandemic. And while we were all hunkering down in our homes, we turned on Netflix and became entranced by one show. You must have the most incredible life to, to live with 187 big cats. And that show was Tiger King. It's easy to see why the true crime documentary captivated audiences around the world. It tells an enthralling story and stars a very colorful cast of characters, including the now famous Carol Baskin and the mulleted Joe Exotic. And you've got how many tigers right now? I have 227. An old disappearance, animals that may have consumed human meat, the reported abuse of wildlife. It's all entwined in this ridiculously bizarre documentary. We've never seen anything like Tiger King, and that is exactly why we love it. I consider that bitch to be one of the biggest terrorists in the exotic animal world right now. Number 11, Narcos. For those of us with a morbid fascination with drug empires, you can't do much better than Narcos. 
like this Spanish language show from Netflix is largely remembered for its first two seasons, which followed the most notorious drug kingpin in history, Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar, the man who would change my life forever. Brazilian actor Wagner Mora shone as Escobar, sprinkling in a little sympathy with the cold-blooded and dead-eyed brutality. Narcos came pre-equipped with the spellbinding true story of Pablo Escobar, and it tells the story with a commendable degree of accuracy. Eso es un crimen contra los derechos humanos cometido por un gobierno que se dice llamar democrático. The titular narcos make for intriguing villain protagonists, and while they're written and performed with a humanistic edge, the show never once sugarcoats their deplorable actions. Add in some notable editing and cinematography, and you have an unforgettable crime drama. Cánteme un nombre. Y no va a tener que dividirse en el billete con él. Number 10, The People vs. O.J. Simpson, American Crime Story. The first season of this FX anthology drama proved that true crime could be art. All right, you fellas want to tell me what happens next? Oh, what are you doing? Millions of people know the infamous story of O.J. Simpson, but that didn't make this show any less engrossing. The themes and problems that the story presents are just as topical today as they were in the mid-90s, including issues of race, media, and celebrity. The show is remarkably produced, and the cast is absolutely stacked with outstanding performances. Have we seen enough, Your Honor? There's not a single dud in the mix, and everyone turns in career-best roles, even screen veterans like John Travolta. With a staggering 22 Emmy nominations and nine wins, The People vs. O.J. Simpson is not just an exceptional true crime drama, it's an exceptional show, period. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Number nine, When They See Us. Netflix sure knows how to produce a memorable true crime series. When They See Us tells the real story of a white woman who was assaulted in Central Park back in 1989. The innocent Central Park Five were infamously convicted of the crime, based mostly on the color of their skin and the false confessions they were coerced into giving. You wanna talk proper? Hmm? You think you're gonna bullshit me? You're not gonna Decided bullshit me. I can do this all day. I told you. Boy. I went in the park. You said there's, there's a story and we know. Us. Helmed by Ava DuVernay, When They See Us uses a historic story to speak on various issues currently plaguing America ranging from racial profiling to sexual violence and wrongful convictions. I lied on you too. It's also filled with some illustrious filmmaking, including an Emmy-winning performance from Jarell Jerome. This miniseries tells a harrowing story with marvelous skill. All I know is I'm in here and they not. I hate it here. <laughs> Number eight, Chernobyl. At the time, the Chernobyl disaster was the worst nuclear accident in human history. In the early morning of April 26, 1986, a reactor at the Soviet Union's Chernobyl plant exploded, sending enormous amounts of dangerous radiation into the air. This excellent miniseries explores how the accident occurred, how it was cleaned up, and how the willful ignorance of a civilization made a bad situation even worse. Did you lower the control rods or not? <laughs> Take him to the infirmary. The show serves as a dire warning, but it also makes for terrific entertainment and is astoundingly produced. The winner of a Peabody Award and 10 Primetime and Creative Arts Emmys combined, including Outstanding Limited Series, Chernobyl is a modern masterpiece of television. This entire region must be completely evacuated. Number 7. The Keepers Back in November of 1969, a Catholic nun and high school teacher named Catherine Sesnick disappeared. She was found dead a few months later, and her killing remains unsolved. But no one has proved that she ever came back to her apartment. Instead, she vanished. Who committed the atrocity? What were their potential motives? And was there a cover-up to silence the exposure of a systemic issue? Those are the questions at the heart of The Keepers, a tantalizing Netflix documentary that runs for seven equally gripping episodes. When you take a look at where she lived and where she was found, it's just 
too many coincidences. The mysterious story is enticing, and it's told with impeccable craft, complete with many questions and lots of time hopping. The Keepers is certainly near the top of Netflix true crime documentaries. It's wrong. It's wrong what's happened, but they're still unsolved. Number six, don't F with cats. Hunting an Internet Killer We don't know what's more attention-grabbing, the content of this documentary or its bizarre title. It's all about the hunt for a Canadian man named Luca Magnata, who uploaded his killing of Jun Lin to the Internet. So when I watched his video, I was like, dude, this is like bullshit. There's prices to pay, there's consequences for your actions. The title was inspired by Magnata's previous videos, which saw him killing cats with a vacuum. The dark story is quite well told, unraveling from animal cruelty to homicide. It also offers an enthralling look into the world of internet sleuthing, as a small group of Facebook detectives aim to identify and find Magnata through various clues in his videos. Clearly, he wants to get away with this. But on the other side of Luca that we also know very well is that he likes the chase. For anyone who loves playing private investigator, this Netflix documentary is a must watch. It says, the person you're looking for is currently in London, England, and his name is Luca Magnata. Number five, The Staircase. There is no other documentary like The Staircase. This production utilizes the passing of time for its own unending quality, spanning over 10 years to cover the story of Michael Peterson. My wife had an accident. She's still breathing. What kind of accident? Show them stairs. The original documentary ran in the mid-2000s, shortly after Peterson was charged for killing his wife Kathleen. A two-hour special and extra Netflix episodes were added throughout the years, following Peterson's surprise release from prison and his subsequent Alfred plea that allowed him to remain a free man. When you look at the wounds on Kathleen's head, the theory that a raptor caused those wounds is pretty persuasive. It was amazing to watch this enticing story unravel almost in real time, and it proved how documentaries could utilize flexibility and updates to keep up with current events. And in the end, it left behind one frustrating question. Did he do it? Meanwhile, in 2022, HBO Max released a biographical drama of the same name based on this docuseries. Death, 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 death. What happened? What happened? Are you okay? What happened to Kathleen? Number four, The Innocence Files. Wrongful convictions are a major problem within the American prison system, and The Innocence Files explores it with passion and sympathy. Something I know I didn't do. A Netflix miniseries, this documentary runs for nine episodes and covers various true stories of wrongful conviction and exoneration. It tells its sad stories through the lens of The Innocence Project, a nonprofit that seeks to free those who are falsely imprisoned. When we reached out, he really had accepted his fate of having to serve out this life sentence. The project's co-founders, Peter Neufeld and Barry Sheck, appear regularly throughout the documentary, taking us through the individual stories and speaking on the institutional problem as a whole. Dramatic, if endlessly frustrating, The Innocence Files is a true crime documentary told through the eyes of the guiltless. If I can get someone to look into my case, I know they will easily see that they have the wrong person locked up. Number three, making a murderer. A few true crime documentaries become genuine pop culture sensations, and making a murderer is one of them. Yes, sir, you told me I got you now. I got you in jail. And other guys couldn't do nothing. The story follows Stephen Avery and his nephew Brendan Dassey, both of whom were convicted and imprisoned for the killing of Teresa Halbach. The documentary seemingly takes the sides of Avery and Dassey, portraying them as victims of bias and shoddy legal work. I do not do it. How is your family going to be when they think you're a cold-blooded person? If you made a mistake, they'll understand that. It was a bona fide hit for Netflix, prompting an enormous public reaction, a White House petition, four Emmy Awards, and yes, lots of controversy. Its twisted story and sympathetic characters captured the attention of a nation and generated widespread discussion. What else can you ask for in a true crime documentary? You know, last time it took me 18 years and six weeks to prove my innocence. Uh, this time, I don't know how long. Number two, Mindhunter. David Fincher and True Crime. 
name a more iconic duo. A beloved, if short-lived, Netflix drama, Mindhunter followed the start of the FBI's Behavioral Science Unit, which hoped to explore the psychology of serial killers and other criminals. You didn't lose one hostage or bystander. That's how we measure success. And what a group the show assembled. Included were the likes of Edmund Kemper, Jerry Brudos, David Berkowitz, and Charles Manson, all of whom were written and performed to perfection. Because my truth is simple, and your truth's complicated. Complicated how? Well, you don't see it, but the only truth is now. Now is the only thing that's real. Mindhunter foregoes the typical true crime brutality in favor of rich character work and uncomfortable explorations of evil. It was marvelously made, with Fincher lending the show his signature bleak style. Unfortunately, Fincher stepped away from the series after its second season, leaving behind a lot of irate Netflix subscribers who desperately needed more. I could kill you now pretty easily. Do some interesting things before anyone showed up. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Jinx Netflix has released a lot of great stuff, but this masterclass from HBO reigns supreme. Will you state your full name for the record, please? Robert Durst. The Jinx aired for six weeks between February and March of 2015, generating consistent critical acclaim along the way. It tells the story of American real estate heir Robert Durst, who has been linked to various killings and disappearances, including that of his wife, Kathy. God, the guy looks like a librarian. He doesn't look like a, a person that would dismember a human being. Not only does the Jinx contain an expertly told story, but it also showcased the power and widespread influence of documentary filmmaking. Durst was arrested shortly before the show concluded, an arrest that some argue came about through its many revelations. A magnetic story and real-world ramifications collide to create one of the greatest true crime documentaries of all time. I did not kill my best friend. I did dismember him. 